Okay, good afternoon and welcome to The Jump Seat. For those of you who are watching for the first time, The Jump Seat's a weekly spotlight bringing you key industry thought leaders, subject matter experts, and next generation, next gen insight into uh, new technology and uh, items in the fire service affecting your fire department. It's hosted by uh, two jump seat firefighters, myself and John here, and we'll, we'll tell you more about us in a quick second here. But uh, we're really excited to bring to you a, a look at, uh, you know, behind the scenes of 200 years of service and tradition, as well as uh, design and manufacturing some of the best products in the world today. Uh, and today is no exception. I can't wait till a little later on. Uh, we've got some guests that I think are going to be great to have on board here to uh, introduce some, some products that they build on a regular basis, show us around uh, uh, one of their pieces of, uh, of the product and uh, highlight some cool stuff. So, uh, John, uh, how's your week been, man? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Well, uh, finally, we're getting some good weather. Uh, really excited to get out on the lake, although still got to do things to the, the new, new to us boat, um, getting ready to go and just getting outside. I mean, we've all been inside so much lately and we kind of caught, thankfully it's, it was the tail end of winter when all this hit, but still um, good to get outside. Good, you know, vitamin D is healthy. And I think it's key that we take advantage of the good weather for those that have it and those that don't, it's coming. So <laughs> doing well though. I'm, I'm glad it's Friday. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm ready to be outside myself. And unfortunately we've got the spring rains here in Ohio hitting us pretty hard this week. So uh, they're calling for a great weekend. And hopefully uh, the great week one will be just like this, a great show. And yep. uh, I know we got a lot of cool stuff we're gonna bring to you here, but uh, you know, there's been a lot that's happened in the last week in the fire service. And um, as, as every week really is for first responders. And you know, I hate to keep bringing up this, this whole uh, you know, effects of the coronavirus, but you know, it's one of the topics that is probably most relevant uh, that we've had consistently in a long time. And um, you know, the effect, impacts it has on um, fire departments and uh, the fire service as a whole. Uh, I was actually reading an article here just yesterday um, that they're, they're actually parking trucks in Clark County. If you guys you don't know, Clark County, it's, uh, it's the uh, greater Las Vegas area. They cover the strip. Um, they had an announcement out there. John, if you saw it, they were they're parking 12 trucks. They're just reassigning personnel, but um, they're, they're typically the fire apparatus that cover the strip. And, and right now they just don't have the call volume to do it. I know. Um, how about you guys? Are you guys seeing any slowdown in your neck of the woods with your department? Yeah, uh, definitely. We, we are. So I'll also say this too, in the Midwest, it's kind of that peak grass fire wildland season for us a lot of times. No, yeah. Uh, last yep. year it rained so much, nothing burned it seemed. Um, so this year there's a lot of fuel. So we've had a, a fair amount, uh, maybe, yeah, I wouldn't say excessive, about average on grass fires. But uh, other than that, call mm -hmm. volume's down. I, I did check in with our, our data from our department and through Firehouse software, we found that Overall, we're down 22%, and that's uh, uh, April to March, 22% down. And then EMS, though, was the big one, 73% for us uh, in EMS calls Ooh. down. So people just, they're either going in on their own or they're just not going at all or not calling at all, I should say. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what May numbers look like. We're, here we are in May. So I, uh, I know that a lot of other departments as well that I've talked to have seen a a downturn in a lot of places, certain places, the hot spots, I, I can't speak for that. But for me personally, that's, that's kind of what we've had going. So, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I, I'm really similar from you. And uh, I just checked in with my chief this morning too, and said, Hey, how are we doing? And uh, you know, our call volume is, is off um, year on year as well. Uh, we're about down about 28% total, but um, kind of like you, um, it's grass fire season for us as well here in Ohio. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing major, nothing big, but uh Right. A lot of little things, uh, some of those open burns and, and type events as well. And so we're uh, that 28% doesn't really factor into what we've seen on the EMS side, about 45% off, um, wow. you know, just, just through the month of April. So um, it's mm -hmm. definitely impacting, I think, the run totals and volume, just kind of like Clark County. We're seeing it across the board. You know, I've yeah. talked to some other fire chiefs as well, and, and they've seen, it's interesting, they've seen some fluctuation where EMS is down. But you're also seeing um, a number of folks where they, you know, one one chief I talked to the other day actually is seeing fire volume up. And in their case, they're a, a large uh, metropolitan department. So grass fires is not a thing for them. Yeah. Theirs has actually been, um, you know, people who probably shouldn't be cooking are cooking today. <laughs> and uh, and those, those people who are now staying at home, burning food in the kitchen or um, things of that nature. not frying so. turkeys inside the garage. 
Yeah, right. right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. One other thought, exactly. too, I just thought of that may be relevant, too, is just some departments have changed their SOP for EMS calls where they may not send in or they may not log it the same as they did in a few months ago. So I'm curious how that plays on the numbers, too, without oh, yeah. certain uh, certain conditions in the dispatch or in the you know report over the radio. They may not go in or they may not call it a, a call until a certain point in that uh, EMS uh, you know process. So I'm not sure. Could be you know, that's factor. an factor. Yeah, that's an interesting point as well. And I, actually, I'd throw that out to all you who are watching here uh, now. Um, fire down some feedback on that in the comments, if you wouldn't mind. We might not address it here immediately on the show. We'll follow up, though, afterwards. But we'd love to hear um, how that's impacting you and your local departments also. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, interesting stuff. I mean, it's hard to get away from coronavirus. I know it's a major topic, uh, yeah. no matter how you look at it. So. I think you had a couple of things. Uh, we were talking there yesterday about uh, some of that news in uh, California with those docs yeah. talking, right? Right. Yeah, there was anybody who didn't see it. It's it's on. Uh, it's obviously online, like everything. But there is a, an article. Um, it's one of the Bakersfield, California news stations put this out, and it's probably on some others too. But there was a clinic, a uh, private-owned clinic called Accelerated Health, there in that in that area, uh, owned by two emergency physicians, uh, private practice. And anyway, they raised quite the traffic in views and, and on YouTube over a video that uh, of some of their opinions on COVID and, and what they're seeing. What I found most interesting was how they hit on some of the long-term effects of staying at home. Um, obviously, we're doing that for a reason to, to reduce the peak and not overwhelm our system at once, which totally makes sense. But they had some interesting perspectives, too, that I don't know that, that I hadn't heard um, just regarding our immunity from other outside viral or bacterial factors because every day in the normal in the normal we're out and about we're touching the countertops we're you know at the gas station at the restaurant well anyway not being around that all of a sudden can have some other effects on our immune systems and um, nonetheless they brought just some interesting points up so uh might be something to check out it had like five million views and then it was actually oh, wow. take, taken down and then now you can find some of the the spliced versions of of it but anyhow a, a different perspective that, that i thought was interesting so you know, yeah, it's check it out. It's a it's interesting to see how um, you know people are in those different exposures and developing the antibodies. I was actually reading that other article that came out on the New York Post yesterday uh, yeah. around FDNY and some of the EMS stuff, folks at FDNY, as well as the New York Police Department, and they tested. I believe it was a thousand people, but the, on the EMS side, they were seeing just a, around eighteen percent of them testing positive for having antibodies as they were uh, doing the you know post test, and so. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't, the, the article didn't quite go in, in depth into some of the other areas I would have liked to have had. Um, but, um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing to say that, hey, they've actually, you know, are testing positive for the antibodies um, sure. and from exposures. And I would assume most of them have not, you know, had, had uh, symptoms or other, other pieces as well. Right. Well, and the last piece, too, is just the mental health of, of us, oh, yeah. of, of firefighters, of the guys that are you know, people that have changed their norm entirely in the last 60 days or how many days and just how, you know, we got to keep track of that, uh, both in the station and outside. But uh, mental health will be huge over the next, well, the rest of this year and onward. So, Well, and I think, hey, that kind of leads us up to uh, uh, one of our guests here in two weeks, I think is going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, physiological health and, uh, mm -hmm. and the impacts of stress on the fire service. So I think it's yeah. something that people can you know, stay tuned to. Uh, when we have that guest here in two weeks, yeah, but, um, you know, um, uh, I know we've, we've been, a, been on here about 10 minutes, uh, John, I want to jump to our guests and, and, but I also, I want to go back and touch on last week. For those of you guys who didn't chance, we had, um, uh, a real great guest, uh, with us last week on our episode, uh, chief Ron Sarnicki, the executive director of the national fallen firefighters foundation. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that was great having him here, he brought up, a. A really cool piece and, and I want to just share it again today because it's coming up here in, in really just three more days uh, and I want to make sure we, we throw a plug out for for Ron the National Fallen Firefighters um, you know we had the link last week to go donate go check it out at uh, firehero.org but they also are um, are really putting on an event here on May 4th um, that's actually not just them it's a global piece it's International Firefighters Day and I know a lot of people I didn't know about it until Ron brought it up with us last week but I think it's a great thing for us to share again and um, really I mean I tip my hat uh, to to all of the fellow brothers on the call here that are uh, actively involved in the fire service on a day in day out those who are retired 
um, those with any involvement in the fire and EMS side. And, and uh, you know, that, that uh, May 4th date is really a, a thank you day uh, across the world for all the firefighters actually out there. Um, you can get more on that at uh, the Fallen Firefighters um, website. But, um, you know, the big thing I think is uh, shine a light on your firefighters. And so they're asking folks to, you know, go replace your light bulb in the front of the house uh, or your lights in the front of the house uh, with a red bulb and shine that red bright light all day long on the force. So I know I actually already jumped online. I got one on order. Hopefully it gets in here from Amazon in time. Uh, otherwise I might have to run to the hardware or something to try to find one, but uh, I plan on doing it. And I hope uh, a lot of our listeners uh, I'll throw that red light out. Uh, so thank you to, to all of the fellow brothers and firefighters out there as well. Um, you know, with that being said, John, I, I'm going to jump right in to, uh, to, to, you know, us taking a trip north of the border here today. So both yeah. of us being here in the U.S., um, you know, we don't always get out uh, in about, I've had some more in the past, but uh, I think it's a great opportunity today that we have uh, to, to take a trip north to Canada here. And uh, we actually have um, um, with us today, uh, Brian Nash. Um, and so um, I'm gonna bring Brian online here and unmute him, but Brian Nash is the VP of sales with Fort Gary Fire Apparatus. And uh, I mean, uh, it's a privilege and an honor to have you with us today, Brian. And uh, I know you've got some, uh, some new stuff you're gonna show to us and showcase um, uh, around your product, particularly with us not having FDIC to unveil new products this year. We're trying to give a platform to you and many others to showcase what it is that you guys were going to do special on unveil at FGIC. So Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and Fort Gary Fire Trucks. Good afternoon, Dave and John, and welcome everyone to Fort Gary Fire Trucks. We are located in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I'd like to begin by thanking both Dave and John for giving us the opportunity to showcase our SAM demo unit which was slated to be at the FDIC last week. And one other thing I'd be remiss to do, I'd like to also thank all of our frontline workers and first responders that are doing their best to help us stay safe and cope through this global pandemic. So here we are at this virtual opportunity here with our SAM demo unit, which was, like I said, going to be in Indianapolis last week. So we'll start. Hey, Short Gary Fire Trucks has been in business since 1919. So we celebrated our 100th year anniversary last year. Uh, we have approximately, we're not the largest manufacturer in the world. We have approximately 140 employees, dedicated, passionate employees, which is really our team of people that have really led to our success here in Canada. Uh, what else can I tell you about Fort Gary? We were the first fire truck manufacturer in North America to become ISO certified international standards organization. That was back in 1994. So we predominantly build trucks for Canada, but we do have trucks globally. We have trucks in Cuba, China, Pakistan, United Arab Emirates, Costa Rica, Venezuela, Guatemala, and the list continues. But predominantly our market is domestic Canada and the US. So we have a vast amount of experience with our employees. A few years ago, I had to do a business study, uh, combined experience using some key management people. We had 622 years of combined experience. Now, being in Canada, it's quite cold. We finally warms up here now. We're in the low 60s today, but we're also in grass fire season here as well, folks. It is, we have our spring rains here today as well, too, so but it's, we're hoping for some sun on the weekend. <laughs> But the climate in Canada can be very harsh, a lot of rotten salt and liquid calcium. So that's led us over the years to use some different grades of aluminum than some of the other manufacturers use. Our premium product, which our SAM demo unit is built on, our premium product, which is a 5083 saltwater marine grade aluminum. That difference in both tensile strength and corrosion resistance from a 5052 freshwater marine grade. The tensile strength of the 5080s, 5083 saltwater marine grade aluminum is 46,000 pounds per square inch as compared to 5052, which is 33,000 pounds per square inch. The main reason we switched to 5083 approximately 20 years ago was due to its superior strength and corrosion resistance. So our premium product also offers one of the best warranties in North America, which is a 20 year non-pro rated corrosion perforation warranty, 
as well. It also comes with a 10 year keyword being non prorated paid warranty as well. So, this specific truck is our bumper rescue body. This features an 800 gallon water tank, internal ladder storage, internal suction and pipe pole storage. It's also utilizing the Hale QMAX XS, pardon me, 1500 US gallon per minute pump. 1250 imperial gallon per minute pump and 6,000 liters. Of you got to get you got to get those international metrics in there for us. You I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's always a challenge. So we'll just do a quick walk around the truck. This is on a Spartan chassis, 380 horse Cummins engine, Allison automatic transmission, uh, CD for six. Keeping in mind it is a demo unit, so the truck is not loaded. We want it loaded up with options. We want to be able to sell this truck down the road. So just a quick boo into the cab. Nothing uh, extra special. Tinted windows. Everyone likes tinted window. That's kind of sexy. Up on the doghouse, you'll also notice the SAM, Smart Apparatus Manager, Scene Apparatus Manager, but that is the wireless tablet, which goes along with the SAM system, which I'll jump up there in a minute pull that wireless tablet down. We'll just do continue with a quick walk around on the Fort Gary side of things, passing the pump panel, highlighting the sound system, and the Hale IDEX smart foam as well. So this body is, as I mentioned, 5083 saltwater marine grade aluminum. It's a fully welded extruded aluminum body. I don't want to confuse anybody. The 5083 is the sheath aluminum that builds the compartment walls. The extrusions that we utilize are 6061 and 6066 T6 aluminum extrusions. Fully welded seams, urethane paint in all the compartments is standard. That's gas, oil, and acid resistant paint. Fully removable wheel wells and wheel well liners, which is key if you have to ever get in and do suspension work, that type of work. There's no cutting of the body. This is all bolt on, fully removable to wheel well. Isolation of the similar metals. We isolate between all the similar metals and we do not count paint as an isolation barrier. So if you have a stainless door, for example, up against an aluminum, it will be isolated with a non-porous type of material. Wherever there's a similar metal, we isolate. You will not find a self-tapping screw or a pop rivet allowed anywhere in our construction as well. Everything is drilled and tapped and stainless fasteners with the nylon bushing to isolate between the stainless fastener and the aluminum framework. So fully removable wheel wells is key. These inspection parts here, all of our bodies are strong load. So as you're going over rough roads, which we have a lot of them in Canada, bottles, as the chassis frame rails flex, the body and tank can move independently with it. In my history, I've been with Fort Gary 24 years now in the fire industry for over 30. We have never had a body come back cracked up due to stress cracks. A lot to do with our spring mounting. So that's these inspection ports here cover up those mounts so you can go in there once a year and retorque those mounts. As well, there's another inspection port on the rear wall of the rear compartment that allows access to tail light wiring harnesses as well. You know, it really sounds like you guys have put a lot of focus around um, maintenance and upkeep, specifically in some of the harsh conditions that you see more in Canada uh, in your apparatus. That, the cold weather, the liquid calcium, the, the road salt that they, they put down just destroys vehicles. So we learned a lot over the years. So, so Brian, we have trucks in Nunavut, for example, in the high Arctic, and they have SPAR or West Basto diesel fire heaters to keep all the coolant warm. And we have about 60 odd trucks in the United Arab Emirates. So two completely different challenges. No heater cores or heaters, obviously, in the ones where it's plus 40 degrees Celsius up in the down in United Arab Emirates, and it's minus 45 degrees Celsius up in Nunavut in the high Arctic. So we build a lot of top mountain closed units as well for those extreme cold conditions. So top mountain closed hey, pump off. Brian, Brian, real quick question on that. Have they changed over the years, the last few decades, have they changed anything about what they're putting on the roadways that's affecting these bodies differently? Or is it always yeah. pretty well been predictable of how to, how to build these to meet and exceed that lifespan of the truck? Like for years here, John, in, in Winnipeg and all over Canada, they used a lot of sand and road salt for years. Now they're missing the, mixing the calcium chloride, the liquid, 
goes in and pre-treats the road. Mm -hmm. That is highly corrosive material. It eats vehicles is the bottom line, which forced us to look for different grades of aluminum and stainless steel. We also offer a stainless steel product, but the weight of the vehicle goes up drastically as well as the price. So the 5083 saltwater marine grade aluminum is only, only marginally higher in price than the 5052 freshwater marine grade aluminum. So our premium bodies, we offer the 5083 and our middle of the road bodies, more entry level for a smaller department, less call volume is a 5052 freshwater marine grade aluminum. So that's really why we looked at the different materials. We went through a third party corrosion analysis study back in 1996. And we learned many things from that study. That's where we learned about the different grade of aluminum and all the isolation and everything else that has led us to. And we learn every day because they just keep adding more and more. They're using beet juice now in, in British Columbia, which is also highly corrosive. So that's really led us to look into all these corrosion prevention things that we do. We used to solder all of our wiring and that engineering company took soldering as a corrosion point. As soon as you solder it, you're changing the property of the wire. So that we don't solder everything, everything is crimped and then shrunk as well. While I'm on the electrical the wiring side of things, all of our wiring is color number and function coded every three inches, Deutz connectors, top of line, automotive grade trucking industry connectors. Everything is also in high temp split flex loom as far as all the wiring goes. Moving around the back of the truck, uh, as I mentioned, the bumper rescue body. This, this body is our largest bumper body in the GOP of storage space. We enclose the ladders, all of your ground ladders, roof ladders, attic this compartment, suction on both left and right side, and pipe poles as well. Uh, this is a fork area ladder here, a stainless steel ladder. We all know all the road dirt and mess all comes up on the back of the truck. Some of the other brands of ladder power and whatnot, they do not stand up as well in those extreme conditions. So we designed and built our own stainless ladder, which folds up quite nicely. And it's a three point stance, safety firefighters getting up and down as opposed to steps. So your typical full step here. The running boards and tail boards on our truck again are bolt on, bolt off. Somebody piles into the back, you don't want to be tearing the truck apart, cutting the truck apart, so those are bolt on, bolt off. Just moving over to the passenger side of the truck, I'm not going to open all the farms. You got spare BA bottle storage both sides. And the SAM, the other side, on the non-operator side. So you can still have your SAM on this side plus an emergency item because your throttle is on the other side of the truck. So Trevor, I think we'll move around back. I'll grab our wireless tablet. Well, I tell you what, uh, uh, Brian, I really appreciate this. And uh, th th that truck is beautiful, specifically, you know, how rugged and durable you guys do, in fact, build those vehicles um, for uh, for those harsh environments. So uh, it's been amazing to, to see that. And uh, um, I think, am I right? That is the, I think it's the first uh, SAM unit in Canada, right? I believe you're correct, Dave. It is. We're very excited about SAM. We believe it's the way of the future. Um, it's going to change standard pump operations the way I see it. And I wish I would have thought of this <laughs> myself instead of Jason, but very smart, smart sound. I'm going to read right off your feature sheet, or maybe one of you guys want to fill in the, the folks more. But the SAM control system is an integrated total water flow control system that manages your truck's pump tank intakes and discharges. A touchscreen display provides a simplified interface that totally transforms traditional pump operations. The yeah. SAMS control system provides complete control of the flow to and from the pump from two interfaces, the SAM control center and the pump controller. To me, safety, Dave, you guys, we were talking about it the other day, time on the fire ground. This saves time, it's more efficient, you go with a wireless tablet, this frees up the pump operator to move back from the truck and have a very good overview of the entire fire ground and the safety of this crew. I haven't operated it myself yet, but I'm anxiously awaiting to it. This truck had more demos slated to it all over Canada and North America. So this is the next best thing we can do 
So we very much appreciate this opportunity. Well, Brian, I know um, John and I appreciate you, uh, you coming on with us today and walking us through uh, that beautiful rig there. Um, I, uh, you know, I want to just say congratulations to yourself and the entire management team at Fort Gary on a hundred years. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and, um, you know, thank you, uh, on behalf of myself and John for joining us in the jump seat today and showcasing, uh, not only our SAM system on your truck, but just a, a beautiful all around heavy duty apparatus. So, uh, we do appreciate it. Yeah, Brian, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, one other thing I wanted to throw out there too, we talked a lot about climate and harsh climates. Uh, get on everybody. If you haven't seen it, get on our, I think it's on our social, but we'll double check here. It's a video showing the extreme conditions we tested Sam in to match, well, the same conditions your truck will be in. So for anybody wondering, what about ice? What about, what about the desert in Arizona? Well, don't you, you know, check out the video. That's all I'll say about it. Um, but anyway, that was all thought through. And, and again, we appreciate your time and, and I cannot wait to see this truck going down the road uh take some pictures for us would you have some of those demos and and on the tour so we will my right. truck is for sale people yep. canadian dollars 695 and this is really great for u.s customers around but the exchange rate the way it is u.s canadian about 500,000 canadian would drive this truck away. awesome so thank you very much well thank you brian again and uh we really appreciate you guys being on here uh We'll, we'll jump back to you here in just a minute uh, as a, as a wrap up, but John, I'll let you take it away and kind of close us out here for today. Sure. So uh, again, I just, thanks everybody for coming in on Friday here and, and just kind of looking at, at next week, we are going to be back again. Um, uh, please, please in the comments, let us know if you have ideas for future. We've got at least a couple of months already spoken for per se with this as we get it going, but we would love to hear from you on uh, new folks to bring in. The reality is this industry is full of bright people, and if we don't hear from them, we can't learn from them. So I'm excited to bring in some of those folks, and, and all of us benefit through through that. So um, nonetheless, check us out uh, on our blog. Uh, we also will, will show and, and replay these as well as link comments to Fort Gary's website, uh, as well as their social and stuff like that. So everybody have a great, safe weekend, and, and until next time, uh, we'll see you in the jump seat next Friday. So thank you very much. See you guys. See you next week.